It's tied one and one seed versus Dong Ray Gu. The winner of this match will be facing immediately afterwards on the main stage the person who defeated life two to one. They'll be playing Scarlet. That's an awesome result. Yeah. I'm, I'm really, Scarlet's really been bringing her A game the last week or so. Some fantastic StarCraft. Yeah, yeah I mean. The, the two Red Bull athletes have now fallen out of the tournament, Life and Bomber. Now we have a, a merry-go-round seed going up against Dong Regu to face Scarlet, the last remaining foreigner in this tournament, and honestly, maybe the best Zerg. Yeah, I mean, to beat, beat Life, I, w I actually wouldn't argue at that point. One of the, definitely one of the best Zerg players left in this bracket, so looks like our players are ready to go. We're gonna kick off this third map. We've, we've seen it all, we've seen just a very, very crisp macro play from DRG. We've seen the cannon insanity. A very crisp cannon rush. Is, yeah, the crisp is one way to put it. But, uh, how do you like this third map? Merry-go-round. Do we have any Protosses in the audience? Now, in terms of a collective noise, how do the Protoss players in the building feel about merry-go-round? Okay, there you go. That's about as much as I expected. Yeah. <laughs> I like that boo was the noise, not like, ah, it depends if you can get your third, you know. <laughs> In the top right corner, he showed an exquisite cannon rush to tie the series one and one, but he's going to have to have some straight up tactics to win on this map from Team Dignitas. It is Seed. Learn your cannon tactics from this guy. His opponent in the top left. From Team MVP, it is Dong Regu. Hey, you know, I, I got a comment about this on Twitter. Uh, someone thought that people were booing Seed, but in fact, it's that there are the hardcore Seed fans who yell Seed in that manly baritone. If you can give me a, a, seed, a seed yell. Seed. Seed. seed! seed! I love it. Because it, it, it sounds better like that, not Seed. You don't want to stress the E. That stresses my ears. I'll take it. There it is. Walk well, me through what's happening, Nathanius. Okay. Dong Regu. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for a fast hatchery on this map. Since it's three players, you do have to scout where your opponent is. Yes. Generally speaking. Um, but he's he's been kind of comfortably doing this. And I think as long as as long as you don't based on this map, you shouldn't have to worry about a cannon rush, so. What I'm most interested in is where Seed takes this game because yeah. Dong Regu, I would not be surprised if he did the exact same thing he did in game one on this map. Yeah, I mean, uh, already we see the drone doing the patrolling, the Overlord heading out to mid. If he goes three hatch, that's very, very bold, very brave. I mean, we talked about the fact that the third is very difficult to hold. Let's take a look at Seed's third base out mid map. Just looking at it, you get it. It's huge, it's spread open. One of the attack angles is from high to low ground. So it's, it's difficult to even spot the army that's going to come hit you, let alone battle that army without a choke. So we tend to see players need big mid-game armies. Lots of gateways for Protoss, lots of Ling Roach Hydra for Zerg, because that's the only way to defend the wide open spaces. Yeah, that, that third really is just, it's a it's a nightmarish position to hold for the Protoss with, as you mentioned, all the open space. And Dong Regu has shown, uh, at least in that first game, that he's not going to make mistakes as far as the macro goes. So if Seed wants to bring aggression on this map, He's going to have a good economy to build it off of, and the Overlord will see, so he knows, okay, Nexus first in the gateway. Nothing crazy here, but does does Seed... Because on some maps where it's hard to get a third base, sometimes one of the best ways to do it is to take it really early. Hey, I mean, as counterintuitive as it sounds, it's absolutely true. I mean, you get the economy up to be able to build the units that you need for when it's hard to take the third. The, the, third, the threatening time for the third is that critical 8 to 12 minute mark. So if your expansion's done, you got your Photon Overcharge, you got a lot of probes, you've had time to build gateways, your warp gate's done, and you can defray a lot of Zerg aggression. I think the most important question beyond that is, so he does see this third base, if he doesn't go for his own fast third, what does he do off of two bases? What's good on this map? There's a lot of high ground areas that can be used on the bottom. I think those high ground yeah. bases, hiding pylons there is a, it's pretty common to see. And, I'm interested to know if he gets aggressive, is it going to be based on the heavy gateway setup that he wanted to go for in game one, or are we going to see a little bit of different tech come out of him? Well, we see a chrono boost on Warp Gate. Warp Gate used to be the most chrono boosted thing for Protoss, and now it is 
often the most neglected thing. Sometimes people even intentionally delay and then don't chrono boost. At this point in time, Seed hasn't revealed much at all about what he's doing. The fast Mothership core is an extremely unusual play for most early expanders, but Seed is relying on his gateways to keep himself in this match, and I think it is going to be just a fast third base. Hmm. That's really interesting. I mean, he has this probe in the bottom, so at the very least, he has uh, access to... Uh, like, as we can get a pylon out of the map in the later stage, he just he doesn't need this probe early on. It doesn't need to be for proxies. He just needs to not lose it, because... Yeah. DRG is not a player that's going to miss anything that's hidden out on the map. He's already had these Zerglings looking very diligently. But unlike uh -oh. that first game, he does have speed on the way. Uh-oh. Well, there's one, two, three, four gateways. Keep in mind, Warp Gate typically finishes a little bit after eight minutes for, you know, a very normal, nice, lax Protoss. This is going to be getting done right around seven. Look at Zerg's economy. No Roach Warren. Speed. Oh, this Zergling, DRG, he gets and he sees three of the extra gateways on the way, so he knows there's at oh, least oh, six oh, oh. gates on this map, Sean. Well, the most important thing, though, is to try to stop the pylon from going down, and we already see it's in a secure position. The army is heading down to meet that pylon probe. And, I mean, Seed has to be very careful because he's basically left his main completely and utterly exposed. I, I really like that Dong Regu, unlike that first map that we saw today, has decided to open with a much faster Zergling speed. He has access to the mobile units that he'll need if he can get a good position, if he can get a good engagement on creep. Holding this off is going to get a bit easier for him, but the Roach Warren's not done just yet, and already these Stalkers are coming to poke before speed's complete at this third base. Great pylon placement from Seed. Everyone on a high ground, making sure that he can't hit units and pylons at the same time. Very nice. Preemptive time warp. Look at the Stalker count. Already tremendous. Nine Stalkers on the field. This is such a scary force from C, but now speed is done. DRG, he'd love to get a good surround on this. That Mothership core does not have enough energy for a recall. So as soon as Dong Regu has enough to beat this army, he wants to engage as quickly as possible. He doesn't want to give him time to build Ooh. up energy for force fields. He fetches off one of these queens, not bad. Dong Regu is famous for massing queens early on, is up to six. Most of the time it's just lings and roaches, but here the transfuse, the extra hit points of the queen is oftentimes just enough to deflect the attack. And it looks like Seed is starting to say, uh-oh, I don't think I can break this. And look at this brilliant move. Units lost tab again. Almost nothing lost for Seed. He's playing this cautiously. He's trying to wait for a, a, a recall. He's going to continue to apply pressure, pull back, and then go to phase two of his plan. And in the meantime, whoa, Dong Regu getting drones. I think he's, he's kind of caught an inkling that maybe he has a bit of time since that recall isn't available. It's a bit risky for Seed to fully commit until he has that backup strategy prepared. But it's really, I feel this follow-up that's going to have a lot of impact on this because he did force out a lot of units. You delay the amount of drones that are being made in that earlier phase. And with this plus one, he doesn't have to commit off of this robotic facility, but he could build a couple of immortals and still hit with that, with that upgrade. Plus one being chrono boosted at this point. Chrono Boost is going to allow uh, Seed to catch back up and with the addition of yet more gateways, six gateways out, two more coming in, Immortal being Chrono Boosted. I think it's pretty clear what we're going to be seeing out of Seed, but he's going to make one last push with that recall before making the Immortal attack. Yeah, he's coming in. It's nice that he's actually kept this pylon alive. I'm actually really surprised. He's, he's a very close point of reinforcement. And now, as you mentioned, that Mothership Core with energy for recall, these Zerglings are going to come in. He'll try to sandwich the army. And if he can get on top of those sentries, oh. it'll be nice. But as you mentioned, there's the recall. What a fantastic recall timing. Look at Seed building more sentries. Nine out on the field. He's got one immortal. He's getting the warp prism. He knows that if Zerg has any opportunity to drone up, to power up, to get the extra hatch, Oh no, it's too late. This is all or nothing right now for Seed. He still has the probe in the bottom left by that third base. It's just, okay, now it's just gonna get found, but that War Prism, of course, will also help him. He's actually, he's going from the high ground area, so he's gonna buy, he's gonna miss a lot of this army. Uh -oh. and he's walling himself off back home, but this is, this is a bit awkward. Well, it looks like Dong Regu, oh no, needs to keep every single unit alive in this spot. Will he get force fielded? No. Luckily escapes with the lives of those Zerglings. And now we see how many spines are on the field. Just one, two more in production. Queen count at a stunning seven right now. And the uh, Zergling counterattack with Roaches as well. This is a tough attack to hold off. The force field, I mean, warps in the sentry. There's the force field, but he still can break down these gateways. And suddenly, Seed's a bit worried. He's bringing everything back. He only has that oh, one no. immortal. So these Roaches oh, no. can still do a lot of damage to the Stalkers. They're already very close. 
even with these force fields, but now the Immortal's coming in, and it has been, uh, oh, look at this. That's actually put him right in a donut. Oh, no. Don't worry, Goo went for the counterattack. Seed sweeping in and saying, yes, please, I would love your gift of roaches. But the problem for Seed is that his pressure was not enough to put Dong Regu far behind. Dong Regu's got the extra hatch. He's got seven queens. He's not missing injects. His unit count is still very, very high. This is still a very capable economy to continue to put out units. And as you mentioned, a lot of queens, a lot of transfuses for the defense of Dong Regu. And even these spine crawlers give a nice little touch. There's only a single immortal. And that's not a crazy amount of firepower versus it's he's relying heavily on these stalkers with that plus one to help break this down and he's gonna move in force fields place roaches are coming in he's such a great arc for dong regu even oh, the no. force fields aren't enough to hold all of it back that attack where he used all his force fields mean the sentries right now have no energy it has to be zealot warpins right now for seed he needs units that can behave like force fields and it looks like dong regu is not going to die but he's also not going to crush the attack it's still an extremely even match and he's just cranking out the roaches and zerglings at this point. He knows that in from this position with what he has, he has zerglings watching both of the potential third bases of seed. He knows he's committed off two base. If he can hold this attack, if he can clean this army up just once without losing everything, he's got this game in the series in the oh, back. Oh, seed stepping down the ramp. He spots the spine crawlers getting burrowed, Dong Regu has an eagle eye on this army, knowing exactly where to plant the spines and exactly where to plant his army to make sure the spine crawlers are getting more exercise than most Americans do in a year. <laughs> He's gonna move in, there's the forest fields. This is a pretty tight choke to fight in for Dong Regu. And I think this is a lot of, a lot of these roaches aren't really able to fight, but still some solid trains. Fuse is being brought forward. Wow. And I really think not having an observer, this creep has, is really giving a big edge, I think, to Dong Regu in these positional battles. Dong Regu is extending it out more and more and more with every single battle. That means he has more time to prepare, more time to relax and wait. And I think Seed is actually starting to realize, I, I went all in and I did some damage, but I didn't, deal the, the key damage that I needed. And it looks like Seed is just now rejoining with more Immortals. Uh-oh. This second round attack is going to continue to be more threatening. That's a lot of roaches, Day9. DRG chasing. There's a good force field. He's oh, going to at least no. scare him off for now. But doesn't manage to pinch any of those roaches off. These queens are coming out too, but I don't know how far. That's a large distance to go. With the Hive en route, Dong Regu is going to begin transitioning to Vipers, getting the key pulls on those Immortals. Those are the big damage dealers in this army. And this might look suicidal for Dong Regu, but he has the Econ. He has everything that he needs. He has the Larva. 15 Larva eagerly awaiting. Seed has such a big army. Seed actually doing his Elfie impersonation. <laughs> Every force field that Dong Regu can, can get out of uh, Seed in this phase of the game means that when those Vipers come out, like yes, you mentioned, when, yes. he, when he decides to just use all of this economy, all these extra hatcheries he's built to overwhelm the Protoss force, there won't be enough to parse it. it, it and then it's moving towards the center of this field. If the map just gets more and more open, you need more and more force fields to take a decent yeah. engagement. I mean, this open map favors Roaches so much, and I love this play from Seed, trying to do what he can to do damage in the main base. The Queens arrive, don't have enough transfuse. Roach is still narrowly evading these force fields. Having a lot of queens makes defending these war prism attacks a little bit easier. That main force is still stepping onto the creep in the center. Big Roach counterattack, and suddenly there's nothing here to defend against. A single photon cannon's not going to be enough. And Seed, he's just going to—is he just going to go for it? He's stepping onto the creep. He's moving forward. He has the observer this time. He's starting to clean up this defensive setup. DRG wants to throw everything away. Can, can Seed afford a base trade? Where's his mo he doesn't even have a mothership core. Seed has just decided it's all or nothing now. No mothership core means no recall, means main is gonna have to go. And it looks like Seed is trying to find the optimal angle to place this gigantic army. Seed, where are you going? Needs to get into that main now. Seven spines, Dong Regu saying, if you want a base race, all I gotta do is hold this choke at the front. Where is, is there any, did a probe make it out? War Prism heading back home oh, to lift probes. Picks up eight probes. He still has enough resources to build a Nexus somewhere else on this map. It really comes down to how, how cost effective can they be with these units? He's managing to blow through the spines in the main base. We see him taking out the third base here. There's still a couple probes waiting in the main, but this army from Seed is still pretty capable. It's just not enough of it, I feel, to yeah. win. He can't fight this whole Roach Force oh. head to head. Oh, a couple holes means Dong Regu is going to be able to get out with most of his drones. Uh-oh, uh-oh, not a lot of money for Dong Regu. He needs to have enough to rebuild a hatch. Barely has 300 now. 
plus two almost done. Vipers, uh-oh, Seed has been revealed. To win this game by elimination would be such an incredible victory for Seed. Drones and Roaches are coming to find that pylon. Rebuilding a Nexus, but with the Roaches already coming here, it's going to be a little bit awkward. All of them coming down from the top right side, and where are those... Wait, all the drones, did they come to this base? Oh my god, oh, oh Dari Gu just trying to target fire any building he can. If this is one of the last ones, it might be okay to trade roaches. He doesn't know where he's at. We see everything, and we see that this massive, massive army from DRG doesn't have a potentially good angle here. He's Frodo. shut down so much of the economy of the setup for Dong Rei Gu that with the five sentries he has at that nexus in the south position, he can force field for a really long time. These vipers need to be the playmakers and get those immortals, get the sentries out of that expansion because just roaches aren't gonna cut it when you have this many sentries yeah. on a tight ramp like this. Every queen is, uh, oh, just one queen left, still diligently puking on the hatch at the natural expansion. And that means the only anti-air threat for seed is back home in the base. He can micro this war prison, he can harass with this war prison. Oh, oh no. pulls in the sentries. sentries! He can't force field this ramp. He only has two left. The roaches trying to push through once again. And you know what? He just sends the vipers back, gets a bit more energy, and suddenly Seed's chances are looking more and more uh, grim as this game progresses. Sean. So smart to pull the sentries. We see the nervousness from Seed as he threw down four force fields when he needed only to throw down one. Seed realizes it's going to have to be an army fight. 56 roaches on the field. I don't even know what kind of force field Seed would have to look for, but now we see he's just, he's relocating. He's gonna, the, the bottom's been broken. He missed the force field at the ramp. Oh, the Immortal picked off that Nexus. There's not many buildings left. He builds a Nexus in DRG's old main. Force fields this ramp. The Immortals go into town. One of them's picked off though, and more roaches finish up inside of the space, but there's still those Vipers. This, that's an awkward Nexus shot, Day9. Yeah, that is a very funky spot to have to throw down a Nexus with only one Viper left. It's going to have to be some big pulls from Dong Rei Gu because if you have enough sentries, you can force field forever. But Dong Rei Gu, geez, Dong Rei Gu's got to be really careful. That is a low health hatchery. If he kills his own hatchery, that would be amazing. But oh no, Seed is not, he doesn't have the ramp advantage. Seed. Oh, demisses the force with blinding on. cloud, forces his army back. Dong Rei Gu dancing and rushes around these forces. He's gonna gobble this Protoss army up. GG. It's gonna be a Dong Rei Gu versus Scarlet rematch. We've seen these two battle before. Both of them having such close series in the lower brackets. Seed played an amazing series of matches, a nail biter till the very end. What a, what a crazy match. When you have probes being put in warp prisms, you know things have gotten a little bit dicey, Day9. Yes, and the, the Foresight split his army up to try to control the ramp. So smart, but Dong Rei Gu on point. There's the man walking across the front. Dong Rei Gu has just been impressing everyone, qualifying from the open bracket to pool play, getting third in the open bracket, not quite able to cinch that top spot but now showing that he absolutely deserves to be here in Championship Sunday as he advances to the top 12. Just an absolutely great series to see from him. Really solid play. We've been seeing this style come up a lot from the top Zergs that have been competing in this tournament, like DRG, like Hyun. Lots of Lings, lots of Roaches, and it yeah. leads to some pretty exciting games. I mean, that is, I, I'm still speechless at that finish. It could have gone either way, so close to the end. When I saw the Vipers advancing to that ramp, I could not believe how clever a play that is to pull the sentries. It's so easy to want to go for the high value targets. You abduct the immortals. No, you get to abduct whatever you want. Sentries, the absolutely correct choice, the high energy sentries at that. And you saw how shaken Seed was trying to force field desperately and missing so many key force fields in the last few fights. Yeah, I have to say, like that game becomes so different if you don't have those vipers on the field oh, for yeah. Dong Rei Gu. And as, cra as crazy as it was, he still handled himself very well. Just imagine if those force fields, if those few drones don't slip out to the right side, if he picks off that base that builds in the bottom right. center. Oh. There's so many different like ways this could have played out just from the tiniest little things. But of course, that is what is making Championship Sunday so exciting. The fact that these games are coming down to the last few seconds and you're really seeing the human side of players being nervous on the big stage has tangible impacts on the gameplay and you need to have that steel focus that Dong Rei Gu has to even be willing to dance in the final game <laughs> number three. When we return, it's going to be another blockbuster match. Dong Rei Gu versus Scarlet on main stage.